This is a hopefully improved version of a previous video I did of OBD Link software and hardware. The one I did before was done on a very low resolution uh, camera. Uh, it was in my cell phone. So it was not very high quality and it's difficult to really tell anything about it. And the picture moved around so much it was kind of hard to watch it. Now let's improve that a little bit if we can. Right there is the device that connects to the uh, uh, DTC, Diagnostic Trouble Code, connector underneath my dashboard. This is uh, transmitting data from the car via, do via Bluetooth to this device. This is a Samsung Tab A Android tablet. Now, uh, let's see here. Back this up, back out of this. Here's the main screen. Settings, diagnostics, dashboard, maps, monitors, uh, logs. Uh, connect it and disconnect it. I have it configured to automatically connect whenever I start the program and it finds the little plug-in. Now, uh, I have a dashboard. This is one of the most important or valuable components of this. You can set up all kind of displays. Your speed, the temperature of the engine, or the coolant of the engine, RPMs, math sensor data, air intake temperature, voltage of the battery. There's uh, O2 sensors, bank 1 and bank 2. Uh, I see bank two just kicked on, at least one of the sensors did. So, let's see what else we got. Short-term fuel, short, short term and long-term fuel trim numbers. This is really important stuff uh, to monitor whether your car is uh, running lean or rich. Those numbers are very uh, typical and they're normal. They're completely normal. So this, that means this car just doesn't have a problem, at least in that regard. Now I could add other things too. You can add as many screens as you want through this little, I don't know if you can see the three little dots down there or not. There it is. Let's push the three little dots and it gives you some options on things you can add. Add a display, add a dashboard. You can have custom dashboards for different cars. Save them of course. Calibrate device sensors, all sorts of different things. Uh, toggle HLD mode, whatever that is. I don't even know what that is. Um, now, uh, when you go back in this thing, say you have a trouble code come up on your dashboard, you would um, hit the button Diagnostics, which is right here. Now that's going to tell me since the car is running, you probably don't want to do this, but I'm going to ignore that and say no. And it will come up, hopefully, and it will say, there are no trouble codes. Wait a minute, let's see. Let hit the wrong button. Are you sure you want to do this? You want to do Yes, I do. Okay. No trouble codes found. Uh, if you did have a trouble code, it also collects freeze frame, frame data from when the code set. Uh, to uh, know what conditions the car was operating under when the code uh, popped. Um, PID values, um, there uh, are only two set up, vehicle speed and RPM. If I could set up others if I wanted to. There's telling me that I've got a 717 RPM at idle right now. And it continuously flips as the engine. Here, let me rev it up for you. Should go up. Let's see what it does. And there it goes. Now, uh, let's see what else do we do. Monitors. It'll monitor the fuel system misfires. All these tests. Tell you if your car is ready to be inspected by the uh, state for air pollution control measures. Mode six. Mode six is. Uh, a diagnostic you would use 
if um, well, you can count misfires on a cylinder, for instance. It'll tell you if the code might say you've got a misfire on c cylinder three. Well, with this thing, you can go find cylinder three here, and it'll tell you how many misfires it's had in a drive cycle. 50, 100, you know, that sort of thing. Mode 9, not sure what that is. I don't use that very often. Or ever, actually. Let's see. That's the VIN number. Calibration ID, calibration verification number for the ECU. So there's some information about that. All well, this program is very helpful. Uh, I use it almost exclusively to monitor real time uh, behavior by the car. You know, RPMs, fuel trim, whether the O2 sensor is working or not. And it's in closed loop now, so the O2 sensors are all working as they should reporting values to the ECU, which is in turn adjusting the fuel trim, like that, to keep these two values as close to zero as they can. Uh, and again, those normals are, the numbers are completely normal. Well, anyway, that's a brief little overview of this program. I hope you found it helpful, and I hope it's a lot less annoying to watch than the last one I posted.